Today in the news, we got Nvidia thickness and AMD overclocking. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. A couple of months ago, we got our first look at the company's new design for their RTX 3080 Founders Edition cards. While not everyone liked the design, personally, I didn't mind, one thing was for sure, Nvidia was going a different route for cooling. Now, this was apparently one of the few designs possible for the Founders Edition, but it looks like it is the official one since the same design has been leaked for the RTX 3090. And while this design with an all heatsink cooler for the RTX 3080 was thought to be huge, you haven't seen the last of it. Meet the leaked design of the RTX 3090. Wow, that is a big boy right there. As you can see, the 3090 Founders Edition will up the thickness compared to the 3080 with a triple slot design. Not only that, but take a look at how much taller it is. A current Founders Edition card is about 11.57 centimeters tall. That's from the top of the card to the bottom of the PCIe connector. By my calculations, this puts the RTX 3090 at around, if not a little over 14 centimeters tall. This means that the fans in the front and the back that you're looking at right now, those are close to 120 millimeters. That's insane. As for the length of the card, it looks to be about 15 to 16 percent longer than the 2080, making it a little over 300 millimeters long or 12 inches. That's bigger than this already super chunky RTX 2080 Super that's going in my next computer. Stay tuned for uh, a build video. Also, just like the RTX 3080, 80 design, the two fans look like they have different designs and it looks like the front one pushes air on the die area slash the PCB and rotates counterclockwise while the back one pushes the air through the fin stack but rotates clockwise. Another thing that is different from the RTX 3080 Founders Edition is the fin density or at least just the number of fins since this card is considerably larger. It also sports a bronze finish. According to the leaker, the RTX RTX 3090 would be priced at $1,400, the 3080 at $800, the 3070 at $600, and the 3060 at $400. As with any launch though, pricing can be changed hours before the event or even after like we saw AMD do with the RX 5700 series, so keep that in mind. Also, in NVIDIA news, it looks like the chip won't be the only thing running hot. Apparently, the new GDDR6X memory is going to be close to boiling hot with up to 98 degrees Celsius on the hottest module. This information comes from a board partner who spoke to Igor's lab. Igor previously said that he expects the PG132 Ampere board to only use about a maximum of 230 watts for the chip itself. With the extreme memory clocks of GDDR6, it's understandable that it would need better cooling and more power. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the RTX 3090 has such a thick cooler, since its memory is said to be at 21 gigabits per second. The two slot design of the RTX 3080 would have it clocked lower at 19 gigabits per second, thus letting it run cooler. That's pretty much it for the Nvidia segment. Let me know what you guys think of the design. Personally, I find it looks good, but <laughs> it's huge. Next up, we got some AMD news. Recently, the company unveiled their budget-oriented A520 chipset. This new chipset, while being the cheapest, unfortunately has a lot of the 500 series features cut out. On A520, the speed of the PCIe lanes are capped at Gen 3, no matter which slot or CPU you use, which isn't that big of a deal, but the bigger cutback is on overclocking. Or is it? You see, officially, which means according to AMD, you can't overclock on A520. But Buildzoid over on actually hardcore overclocking found out that he could. He bought an A520MH from Gigabyte and clocked an R5-3600 to around 4.35 GHz all-core. While he couldn't actually use the regular easy overclocking methods like changing the multiplier, in fact he said that you can change the multiplier but it wouldn't actually do anything, he was able to overclock using BCLK overclocking. Now obviously I wouldn't recommend doing so since it messes with things like PCIe, system memory, and could result in strange 
range issues. But if you're an experienced overclocker, it's something interesting to see. I should also mention that this is probably a motherboard vendor to motherboard vendor thing. There's a chance that one motherboard vendor doesn't do it, but at least the A520MH does it. Link to Buildzoid's video down below. And that is pretty much it for the catch up guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty my dudes and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. By the way, I just love this GPU. It has three HDMI. This is what I want. I don't want more display ports. I want more HDMIs.